All right, so good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Tony Anthony Hackett. I, I call him Tony because we've gotten to know each other a little bit here. All right, uh, Anthony J. Hackett is from the uh, Armetis Corporation. They're a Germany-based company uh, in the area of video analytics. And Tony is coming to us today from, uh, I think, Waterloo, Ontario. Tony, why don't you say hello and uh, give us a little background. Who are you, the, the company, and things of that nature? Sure, thank you. Good morning. I appreciate the uh, opportunity. So, uh, my name is Tony Hackett. I work for a company called iMetis. iMetis is actually headquartered in Waterloo, Ontario. Uh, we have uh, an office in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm based in upstate New York and I uh, have been with the company for a number of years. And before that, was in the uh, OEM world where I manufacture DVRs, NVRs, network appliances, uh, including uh, appliances for other video analytics companies. Uh, it's where I had the opportunity to first get to know iMetis, so I knew them for a number of years um, before I came on board with them. What they have is um, something that's kind of unique to the industry. They have um, a product called Symphony, which is a software-only product. Um, it is both video management and analytics. Um, iMetis is probably best known right now for their analytics, and um, <clears throat> we are uh, essentially sold and distributed throughout the world, over 100 countries. Uh, we have 350 uh, certified partners worldwide. Well, thanks thanks for that, Tony. I certainly appreciate it. And we, we, we do sincerely appreciate you, you know, uh, from beautiful upstate New York, uh, tuning in with us here via Skype video. All right, that's a pretty cool thing, don't you think? Ah, oh, it's great. Yeah, I think I think it's a wonderful thing. All right, I'm waiting for the deer and the cantaloupe in the background over there. You know, I'm figuring that you're probably somewhere in the mountains of upstate New York, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, yeah. unfortunately, we're all too familiar with deer here. <laughs> sure, they're unfortunate. I hear you. All right, so let's get into the program here, all right? We've got about uh, eight minutes left here. Analytics 101. Tony, can you, can you kind of walk me through here? Uh, you know, pretend I'm sort of like the... Uh, you know, the, the, dum the dummy that you see in the cars, you know, uh, you know, I'm the roadkill out there. You're trying to make me an intelligent person in this area. All right. Uh, so give me the analytics 101, I guess, maybe video motion detection. Is that the, is that where we start? That's what? always a good place to start. It's always maybe, um, wise to kind of consider where we've come from. Right. Um, in the early 2000s, some might argue, say like, uh, 1998, uh, capture cards um, start pouring into the United States from Asia. Um, these are known as frame grabber cards or media cards, depending on who you talk to. And essentially, anybody that can um, assemble a computer and place one of these capture cards um, into the system creates their own DVR overnight and their own brand. And um, you know, there's many. There's over uh, 200 companies easily that make a DVR here in the United States. Um, and it's interesting that we still refer to surveillance footage as tape still, but that, 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 that's changing. So we've come from um, uh, where we've been heavily into an analog solution, into more of a digital solution. Um, certainly IP video is prevalent today. So um, the adoption of video is really at a high point. Um, we are still in a convergence mode. Uh, from transitioning from analog into IP for sure. Um, and then we have this thing called uh, video analytics. If you think about um, video, whether it was on VCR tape or e even today in some, in some cases, um, video is, is just that. It's, it's just footage that sits in a storage device. Um, and the market, um, whether it be for military applications, law enforcement, or retail, um, or transportation wants to do something with that information that they know is inside uh, the storage device but have no way to extrapolate any value um, <clears throat> from the system. So the first thing that kind of came onto the market was something called video motion detection. And most people from the computer vision world or analytics companies, if you will, um, would probably argue that video motion detection is certainly not analytics. Um, but what video motion detection is, is it's simply analyzing um, the scene for any type of pixel change. So that means if, if lights change, if uh, wind blows a tree, for example, um, or a person walking down the hallway, um, the video, video motion detection will then um, report that something significant has happened. 
Um, and what I just said there, reporting on something significant, is the inherent flaw in video motion detection. That is, it assumes that just anything that changes is important. Analytics takes the customer to a next level where um, it relies on something called computer vision technology or machine vision to use a set of complicated mathematical formulas and algorithms to sort of um, understand and analyze the scene um, and translate that into either an alarm or some type of, uh, of data point to be extrapolated later at a later point in time. Right, and so that... that so a that kind of, of spitting it out, but that's inherently the difference between video motion detection and computer vision. No, no, I, I, I can appreciate that. And I think if you look back far enough in the industry, what we're kind of uh, on the edges with here is, um, uh, you know, those false positives and false negatives, where in, in motion, pure motion detection, you know, whether you, you know, what, what, they, what I've always heard, you dial it up, you know, you could get every every single alert possible whenever it sees a bird flying by, a bee flying by, or you know some other you know not not important event. It would alert you, and that would give you a false positive. Mm -hmm. All right, or you could dial it back the other way, and then you could have a full scale human being walking by. But you know, if you didn't have it configured correctly, you'd wind up with false negatives. You know, and and I think that's where we're getting into. So the analytics is going to help us tighten that up through mathematical equation, uh, mathematical formulas. Yeah, that's that's essentially what it is. In, in the background, um, it's a computational formula. Um, some are more simple than others, for sure. Um, this is um, really the the thing that it, that limits the ability for really. Um, high-powered, if you will, analytics to reside at the edge um, because it requires a lot of horsepower from a chip. Um, and that chip can take the form of the processor chip on, on your computer. It could be a, a graphic card chip or it could be um, a digital signal processor chip, say, inside of a camera. Okay. okay. So the, the computer, I, I just want to, I, I have some notes here. The computer vision or the machine vision is teaching a machine to understand. Can you just go over that one more time? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, it, it's too bad I couldn't show you as a, as a real uh, video here um, because we could get this down real quick. But if you think about a train station, right? Sure. An outdoor train station. Um, shadows um, could appear um, where there's a, a track and my shadow could be cast across that track, right? Um, uh, machine, uh, sorry, uh, video motion detection would, would assume that, you know, there's a person on the track, okay? Um, although our trained eye understands that that's not a person, it's a shadow. So, in effect, you're, you're training um, the machine to sort of think like a human and not to alarm on shadows that, that appear on the track, um, but rather when a real person is on the track. And that sounds kind of you know way out there, but but that's where we are today with analytics. No, it's uh, it's it's not way sorry. it's not way out there at all. We we've been we've been looking at video analytics for for a number of years here, and with biometrics as, as well. So you know you're you're not out there at all. This is this is this is pretty cool stuff. Okay. All right. So as we get into the applications, uh, Tony, uh, you know what are some of the business challenges that are out there? Depends who you talk to. Uh, that I mean, that's given. Um, the uh, what's interesting uh, from our perspective, being an analytics uh, video management company, is that what we what we do sometimes in retail to help them, um, a lot of times will translate into value for law enforcement and vice versa. Um, so if we come up with some type of algorithm that that solves a problem um, in, in one in one area, um, it can be applied or used in another. Um, area to reduce uh, some type of business cost or, or threat. So if we look at the different types of um, verticals such as education, for example, um, retail, government, industrial, uh, transportation, all of those markets are served very well um, by analytics. And it doesn't necessarily mean that analytics are on every single camera, um, but the customer would have the ability to apply, if you will, analytic algorithms to any area of their uh, operation or business to solve 
business issues, and that can be a security matter or it could be a marketing matter. So we might have video analytics at the front door. Let's pick a let's pick a company out there, a small little company. Uh, how about Walmart? All right. So uh, we have a small little company like Walmart out there, and they have a camera at their front door. Uh, there might be one type of video analytics on that front door, maybe the, for the purposes of counting uh, uh, the number of people coming in the front door, the number of people leaving the front door. Maybe it's just doing flow, flow management. All right. Then we have uh, the uh, the uh, the Dell Computer Corporation has just signed a major deal with Walmart. But they really want to know, are people looking at our display? So you might have a camera on that Dell computer display within Walmart, all right, that's actually doing another type of analytic. Maybe it's counting people. Maybe it's sensing how long people are staying at the counter. Maybe there's uh, separate parts of the display where people are, are maybe paying more attention to the iPad rather than the laptop, rather than the desktop. Or maybe they're looking at the newest and the latest, uh, you know, Dell, whatever you want to call it. All right. Yeah. That may be just a special, maybe it's a, a fabulous sale. All right. Uh, Walmart was recently selling uh, uh, Vista TVs for $198. Maybe they've got people trained. Oh, yeah, quite a deal. All right. <clears throat> 26 inches, by the way. All right, maybe they have a you know a camera focused in on that area to see, hey, how many people really did buy buy into that, and could we replicate that across all one thousand of our stores or five thousand? I don't know how many Walmart has, and I'm being facetious when I say Walmart is small little company, but they could have a number of different analytic um, applications in the store focusing in on different things. Mm -hmm. All well, right. it's interesting that, that all the different points that you just made um, are all marketing related they're, or they're operational points. Um, everything that you just mentioned really doesn't help the loss prevention manager. So how do you use analytics to detect um, behavior? Because you, you, um, you're crossing into an area where you're um, maybe looking into somebody's intent um, and you'll never be able to read anybody's mind, of course. Uh, but there are precursors to theft that we use in retail um, and one of those is discarded packaging left in, in an area of the store. Well, um, why, don't we, why don't we take a short break here, and why don't we pick up on that point in just a minute? Okay. All right. right. 